A suspect is brought into police custody to be booked in. Okay, baseball, sir. You ready? There's the mugshot. The fingerprints. So far, so familiar. But could screening for ADHD become another part of the process? Detainees will be in their cell and a volunteer will come um, and often the opportunity to do the checklist and just take a seat on the bench where they'll run through the questions with them. The City of London Police Station is the first in the country to try it out. The ambition is that we can screen as many uh, detainees that come into custody as possible to identify that if they have traits of ADHD and then refer them onwards um, for more information or diagnosis if they wish to. Um, the ultimate ambition being if we can identify that um, it's a common theme to prevent reoffending by um, getting people help and stopping them, stopping them coming back into custody again. Could it have helped this ex-offender? I've been to prison 16 times, um, but arrest in excess of 500 times. He doesn't want to be identified, so we'll call him Joe. Last year he was diagnosed with ADHD after more than 15 years of offending. Shoplifting, assault, possession of an offensive weapon, just, just, it just mounted and mounted. And how did you cope in prison? Not very well at all. Um, assaulted people, self-harmed, smashed my cell up. Now I know about ADHD and my di diagnostic. I have a, a understanding of it, um, but I didn't have an understanding of anything. I always knew I was... There was a lot more going on than, than people around me, uh, not in a good way. It was just always so busy up there. Campaigners say it's critical. People with ADHD know they have the condition so they can understand it. ADHD people get very bored. They want excitement. They need adrenaline, excitement. And so often that can turn into offending so easily, you know, just by having a fight or, or, or kicking something as you're walking past to get rid of a bit of your hyperactivity and bang, you're done for criminal damage. So there are so many, literally dozens of ADHD traits, but the prime ones I would say are impulsivity, not thinking of the consequences, wanting everything now, or thinking we know best, having no patience and boredom. Boredom is a killer. So what's the answer? The answer is screening. Screening right the way through the criminal justice system. And after that, we've been given exclusive access to a study which looked at 210 inmates with neurodivergent conditions, including ADHD. They gave them one-to-one -one coaching to help them understand their condition and work on techniques like resilience and anger management. At the end of the three-year study, just 1% had reoffended. Compare that to the current national rate of 25%. 207 of those offenders successfully, uh, they settled down in prison, they started having less fights, they started being compliant, engaging in education and healthcare. They went through the gates and 207 of those offenders went into education, training or an apprenticeship. Dr Banfield says her findings should be a wake-up call. She shared them with the Ministry of Justice. It could change the face of rehabilitation. Um, it's, it will change the course of uh, an offender's life. You know, it, it will mean that they might never come back to prison. Caroline wasn't on Dr Banfield's programme, but after a drug addiction charity suggested she could have yeah. ADHD, she did manage to turn her life around. You know, I was on a young offender's wing in Holloway um, and the wings are full of, of, of young people, you know, who presented very much like me. Um, you know, really kind of chaotic, impulsive behaviour. But getting that diagnosis was a real, you know, light bulb moment. It was quite emotional because I finally started to understand, actually, maybe I'm, I'm not all bad. You know, maybe I can do this. Maybe I am smart. I was able to make a, a go of life and, and help other people. Just put your arms out to the side for me. But Caroline and Joe both wish they'd been helped when they first got into trouble. It's important to say that screening isn't the same as a diagnosis, but it is an indicator and it's quick, easy and cost effective. Here, they say it could easily be replicated at forces across the country. At this police station, at every police station, officers see the same faces again and again. Could this pilot scheme be the key to stopping that revolving door of offenders?